Willamel opsometer is used to determine film thickness and optical properties of a sample. The data is obtained by measuring the change in polarization state of light when light of a known wavelength is transmitted through or reflected off the surface of a sample. Let's get familiar with the various parts of the machine. There are four main parts of the Willamel opsometer. The sample stage holds your sample and maneuvers it to take measurements at specific points. The polarizer sends a polarized beam of light to a point on your sample. The analyzer collects a beam of light and compares its current polarization state to its initial state. The monochromator selects specific wavelengths of light and sends them to the polarizer. Let's now introduce our lab users. You'll first need to make sure that the monochromatic power is on. Then turn on the lamp power and lamp ignition switches, which are located on the side of the monochromatic. Also, make sure to turn the vacuum pump on. The next step is to type in your user password on the computer. If you do not have a user password, you will need to contact the MRC staff. Once you've successfully logged in, your username should appear in the top left corner of the monitor. Now you will need to configure the software. The Willem software will ask you to make several choices. For the project setting, you should choose general use, unless your group has its own specific project. For the recipe setting, select the recipe that best fits the sample you wish to analyze. Keep in mind the type of substrate, the type of film, and the appropriate film thickness. If you cannot find an existing recipe to match your sample, contact the MRC staff. The choice of recipe will not affect how the sample is scanned. After scanning, the data is archived so that it can be accessed later and reanalyzed using a different recipe. The Willem ellipsometer is capable of automatically performing scans at several designated points along the wafer. For the scan pattern, select the diameter and the number of points you wish to scan. For a single point scan, select none. For the sample description, you should enter an appropriate description of your sample, which will allow you to find it later when you wish to review the results of the scan. Once the appropriate information has been supplied, click Measure to continue. You will now need to prepare the ellipsometer for the scan. The software will provide you with a summary of the scan that you have set up. If this information is correct, place the sample onto the sample stage. It should be roughly centered, but does not need to be exact. Flip the vacuum switch, which is located at the base of the ellipsometer, to vacuum, and then select the OK. Do not attempt to adjust your sample when the vacuum is on. Doing so could cause your sample to break. After a few seconds, the system will prompt you to insert the alignment detector into the alignment detector socket, which is located in the center of the polarizer. The alignment detector can normally be found in a slot towards the back of the machine on either the left or right side. As you insert the alignment detector, keep the longest pin or guide pin facing you and keep the detector vertical. Slowly and very gently push the detector up into the slots of the polarizer. Done correctly, the detector will easily slide in and hold. It is very important to use extreme caution when inserting the alignment detector. Breaking or even bending the pens will render the detector useless and will require its replacement. Inserting the detector can be very tricky and may take you several tries. Once the detector is in place, click OK. The next screen will show a red crosshair somewhere on a pair of axes. Align the crosshair with the center of the axes by turning the alignment knobs located on the front and right side of the sample stage. Once the crosshair is inside the box, the coordinates will appear on the top of the screen. Use the alignment knobs to try to get the crosshair as perfectly centered as possible. You should never be too forceful with the alignment knobs because this could damage them. Once the crosshair is centered appropriately, you should be able to see a blue bar on the left side of the screen. The intensity will need to be above the minimum line for the scan to take place. When everything is set correctly, click Continue. You should then be prompted to remove the alignment detector. Once you've done this, select OK. The polarizer will then move it to the scan position. For the next step, you should first make sure that the shutter lever is down and that the detector iris is open. You will need to adjust the intensity by rotating the height adjustment knob. 
Watch the blue bar and attempt to maximize the distance between the horizontal blue bar and the black bar by adjusting the knob. The intensity must be greater than 5 for the scan to take place. If it is still too low after adjusting the stage height, check again to make sure that the shutter on the analyzer is open. If the intensity is still too low, contact the MRC staff. Once you have appropriately prepared for the scan, click continue and your scan will begin. Each point will be scanned in order and the data will be presented on the screen. A medium to large scan can take a fair amount of time depending on the material. Since the scan is fully automated, you do not have to be present during the entire scan. Once the scan is finished, toggle the vacuum to vent and remove your sample from the stage. If this is the last sample you will scan, turn off the ellipsometer lamp by pressing the lamp power button on the monochromatic system. The lamp ignition button will turn off automatically. Switch the vacuum pump to off. The software should now have a summary of the results of the scan. The data provided includes film thickness, refractive index, and mean squared error, or MSE. The lower the MSE, the better your sample matches the model of the recipe selected prior to scanning. An MSE value greater than 100 typically suggests the analysis method did not accurately model your sample. You may wish to reanalyze your sample. Select OK if the results provided you with the information required and you are done analyzing the sample. Alternatively, you can click View Results if you wish to view more detailed information about your sample or would like to reanalyze it. In the Samples box, select the sample you wish to view. The samples are organized by date and labeled by the description you previously entered. Once selected, the results are shown in the text box on the right side. Data for all analyzed points, as well as the statistical data of the points, are shown. Clicking the graph button at the bottom will provide 3D graphs of different sample parameters and allow you to see how they change over the area of your sample. This graph can be most useful for viewing the uniformity of your sample. If you see a screen telling you that the ellipsometer needs to be calibrated, then you will need to perform a calibration before continuing. The calibration will either begin automatically if the system senses it needs to be calibrated, or you can choose calibration from the software configuration screen. The system will prompt you to mount the calibration wafer onto the sample stage. The calibration wafer should be in close proximity to the ellipsometer. It is clearly marked. Follow the on-screen instructions. Setting up the calibration wafer for a scan consists of the same basic steps as a normal scan. After adjusting the height of the stage, the ellipsometer will begin the scan. The calibration usually takes about 10 minutes. Afterwards, a summary of the calibration data will be shown. Make sure the MSE is reasonably low, otherwise the calibration needs to be performed again. Click OK and begin your own scan. This should complete the process of calibration. You should now have a pretty good understanding of how the Woolam ellipsometer works. You should be able to configure the software, prepare the ellipsometer for the scan, measure your sample, analyze the data, and calibrate the ellipsometer if is needed. If you have any questions, you may direct them to the MRC staff. Please do not direct your questions to Charlie.